The television broadcast of the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour is presented in part by The Martin Guitar Company, making handcrafted guitars since 1833. Online at martinguitar.com. The Lexington Convention and Visitors Bureau, providing information to visit Lexington, Kentucky online at visitlex.com. By Folkbook, a social media site for arts and music online at folk-book.com and by Time Warner Cable, providing cable, telephone, and internet service. Closed captioning provided by the Deering Banjo Company. Here on the Louisiana Hayride, his name is Hank Williams. The best in the from the Grand Ole Opry, Bill Monroe. Bluegrass Boy. <laughs> Hi, this is Bruce Horns. Hi, this is Kevin Moe. Hey, folks, this is Bela Fleck. Hi, folks, this is Sam Bush. Hello, this is Odetta. This is Joan Baez, and you're listening to the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour. And now, gather the family around and sit back in your easy chair. It's time again for the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour, our worldwide celebration of grassroots music. Let's welcome folk singer, author, and tree hugger, Michael Jonathan. Thank you. When I was a little fellow growing up in upstate New York along the Hudson River, I would watch a lot of singers and songwriters, people like Pete Seeger, go up and down the river playing concerts because they loved their homes and they were concerned about the environment. And then I eventually moved into the Appalachian Mountains, a little town called Mousy, Kentucky, in Knott County. And I got to thinking about the same thing, seeing what was happening to these beautiful, beautiful mountains. And that's what this song is about. It's called Appalachian Road. Let's turn the clock back, sorry. <laughs> now you can hear it. See, without that on, once they start playing, they'd never hear the guitar. And then they'd be playing one tempo, and me and Bob would be playing another tempo, and we'd sound kind of like disco. <laughs> the rap version of, a of, of Appalachian. Let's try it again, Joe. Starting with Joe again, please. Five. Support for Woodsong Show number 707 is provided by Inside Communications, Sing Out Magazine, IntelliTouch Tuners, The Martin Guitar Company, and by the AER line of professional level acoustic amps. By Folkbook, a social media site for music, arts, fans, and families, and American Recordable Media. When it's time to release your new CD or DVD, call American Recordable Media. By the historic and beautiful city of Lexington and visit Lex.com. The Bluegrass Hospitality Association and the elegant, comfortable Marriott Griffin Gate Hotel, welcoming visitors from all over the world to Lexington, Kentucky. Take your next vacation trip to the musical state of Kentucky. To attend a taping of Woodsongs, visit our website at woodsongs.com. Here on the Louisiana Hayride, his name is Hank Williams, the best in <laughs> On the Grand Ole Opry, Bill Monroe and his Bluegrass Boys. <laughs> Hi, this is Amy Lou Harris. Hi, folks, this is Sam Bush. Hello, this is Odetta. This is Joan Baez, and you're listening to the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour. And now, gather the family around and sit back in your easy chair. It's time again for the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour, our worldwide celebration of grassroots music. Let's welcome folk singer Michael Jonathan. Thank you very much. I remember when I was a young kid growing up in upstate New York along the Hudson River, beautiful, beautiful Hudson River. I was always amazed watching all the singers and songwriters that would gather along the shore and put on concerts to bring attention to their love and concern of that beautiful river. People like Pete Seeger and Harry Chapin and others would uh, 
gather and do these wonderful concerts. And then I eventually moved into the Appalachian Mountains, a little town called Mousy, Kentucky. And I was looking at those mountains and started thinking of what I saw when I was a kid, how beautiful and wonderful those mountains are and what was happening to them. And that's what this song is about. It's called Appalachian Road. And there's thunder in the starlight This Appalachian Eve Moonlight casts a shadow Where mountains used to be Someone took a fountain pen And let the mountain go And the earth began to rumble Down Appalachian Road Out to bomb America, to mine a heavy load With the power of Hiroshima, a mushroom cloud arose Every week they dynamite these mountains for the cold And detonate creation down Appalachian Road And once they had their music, front porches and their homes, the people would all gather to sing and praise the Lord. Music left these mountains trading people for the coal, and there is no rhyme or reason down Appalachian Road. They say it's for the people to support their families But chase away the tourists so no one else can see Deceit and destruction are the seeds you sow And you plunder down the hollers of Appalachian Road Can you save a mountain? With words and with a song Can music heal the valley Where mountains once belong Well, we lost 500 mountains And many more will go I know what will stop you before the next one blows We'll strap you to a mountain You're planning to explode And let you blow yourself to pieces Down Appalachian Road The Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour is presented in part by Folkbook, an online social media site for art, music, friends, and fans. Folkbook is a celebration of the creative community in your home, your town, and around the world. For information about Folkbook, you can visit folk-book.com. And by listeners like you, Wood Songs is an all-volunteer-run multimedia celebration of grassroots music broadcasting worldwide and made possible by our audience. You can support our broadcast by becoming a Woodsongs partner. Information on how you can become a Woodsongs partner is online at woodsongs.com. And welcome to the historic Lyric Theater here in our hometown of 
Lexington, Kentucky, the beautiful historic uh, town where at the crossroads of America's folk and bluegrass music. It's the gateway city to the beautiful Appalachian Mountains like we just sang about. So many artists come on this stage to help us celebrate this wonderful world of grassroots music. And we liken this beautiful world of folk music as though it was a diamond. And like a diamond, it has all these different facets on it. Some of those facets are folk or blues, bluegrass, country, Celtic, old-timey, new singer-songwriter. Sometimes it's poetry, sometimes classical, sometimes rock and roll. We celebrate everything on this stage because we love it. And we find that if you, if you ignore one facet of this beautiful musical gem, you've really decimated the value of this wonderful global art form of grassroots, independent music. So we celebrate it all. Artists do come from everywhere to be on the stage. You don't have to be famous to be on Wood Songs. You just have to be very, very good. And our first artist comes to us from the great state of New York. It's his first time on our broadcast. He comes from a very wonderful uh, legacy musical family in America. His father, Jim, was a, a wonderful uh, drummer. His brother, Steve. Uh, Jen Chapin's been on the show. The Chapin sisters have been on the show. Of course, his brother, Harry, had a big, huge hit with this song here, Cats in the Cradle. Child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way, but there were planes to catch and build. What a wonderful pay. song that was. <laughs> Tore the hearts out of so many, uh, so many families. Well, his brother is here, and his brother is a three-time Grammy Award winner. He was the host of the ABC network hit show Make a Wish that was on the air for like a half a decade, which in TV land is absolutely a stunning record. And he's here because he's going to uh, introduce himself from a wonderful album of his own called Give Peas a Chance. <laughs> you organic farmers like that. This is a tune called Locally Grown. We're so proud he's here. Please welcome Tom Chapin. <laughs> for the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio Hour. Thank you, Michael. If I were an apple, I'd be very unhappy traveling 4,000 miles or more From far off Tasmania in a shipping container to a shelf in a Lexington store why should I be tortured when some Kentucky orchard would be totally thrilled to the core? To pick me and crate me, load me and freight me, not 4,000 miles, but four. An apple should be not far from the tree where it ripens in the fall. Locally grown. And locally eaten is globally good, good, good for us all. And if I were a berry, I expect I'd be very contrary and hardly inclined to get shipped out from Chile to a store in North Philly. Hey, I'd have to be out of my mind. It seems paradox and carbon dioxic to force all our food to commute. Wasting gallons of fuel, which we know isn't cool for people or planets or fruit. A berry is fine, not far from its vine, near the farmer's market stall. Locally grown and locally eaten. Is globally good, good, good for us all, yeah. Say what? So when you're walking the aisle past a beautiful pile of the fruit you might want to take home. Do not buy for the table till you check out the label and determine how far it did roam. Aside from the karma of helping a farmer who lives in your county or state, there is one more good reason to buy what's in season. The taste is incredibly great. So keep buying foods from regional dudes. Keep your carbon footprint small. 
Locally grown and locally eaten is globally good, good, good for us all. Remember that part. Locally grown and locally eaten is globally good, good, good for us all. Good, good, good for us all. Wonderful song, Locally Grown, from a CD, Give Peas a Chance. Tom Chapin, nice to have you here, finally. What a, what a delight. It seems like most of my family's been here, and it's about time I got here. I know. Jen Chapin's been here. The Chapin sisters have been here. I should daughters. say, Jen and... is my niece, Harry's daughter, and uh, my, the Chapin sisters are my daughters. Yes, we're very proud of them. And uh, I would have never have thought of, uh, of uh, rhyming, rhyming uh, karma and pharma. <laughs> That's a good song. Well, I wrote that with my good friend John Forster, and the two of us had a great deal of fun uh, for a serious topic, but it was a great deal of fun writing. Yeah, I think uh, co-ops everywhere appreciate that song. Yeah. You, uh, you obviously grew up from a, in a very musical family. Your dad was a jazz uh, legend. And my dad wrote a book in 1948 called uh, Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer, which is still the Bible. He's been gone now for three years. He died just short of 90, uh, three years ago. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and that book, if any, any, any jazz drummer in the world, every time I meet a drummer, I say, oh, you know the, uh, the Chapin book? Are you one of those guys? <laughs> <laughs> in fact, Jen was at, at Berkeley School of Music, and they didn't care if she was Harry Chapin's daughter. She was Jim Chapin's, Jim Chapin's granddaughter. Right, that was right. pretty cool. All the jazz guys. In your family, I mean, uh, you, you yourself, you, you're involved in the uh, global uh, hunger issues sure. and stuff, and, and you also uh, give your time, as, as does y your brothers, Harry included, when he was alive, was, was well known for uh, keeping a very heavy benefit schedule. Using music to help these communities that you happen to be in is a, is a, uh, a gift for the artist, not just a, a gift that the artist gives the communities. I remember uh, you mentioned Pete Seeger, who I was, in, in the reason we started in this music was I was 12 and his, my brother Harry was 14, brother Steve was 11, and we heard a recording called The Weavers at Carnegie mm -hmm. Hall. Yeah. And now Pete Seeger's 93 years old now, and I saw him just recently, we do benefits all the time. I remember being with him when Harry and I were with him, and, and somebody asked, Pete, you've spent your whole life doing these benefits, has it ever made a difference? And he said, I don't know, but what I do know, I've met the good people people with live hearts, live eyes, and live minds. And I think that's, that's the benefit we get. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to talk to more, uh, more about uh, this, this kind of thing, about using your music to help your communities benefit your, your hometowns and the things that you're concerned with. We're going to talk more with uh, Tom Chapin shortly, but we have another artist on our stage who is a uh, renaissance man in many ways. He's a brilliant songwriter, a touring artist. He's an author. He's a playwright. He's also one of those artists that is constantly helping and getting involved in uh, the, the communities and the issues that he's concerned with. And he's got an album called Bristol Bay. We're going to talk about that here shortly, but it's going to help. He's going to introduce himself with a uh, uh, my favorite song of his from an album called New Wood. This is a tune called Gone Gonna Rise Again. Please welcome our friend Psycon to the stage. <laughs> I remember the year that my granddaddy died, gone, gone her eyes again. And they dug his grave on the mountainside, gone, gone her eyes again. I was too young to understand the way he felt about the land. But I could read his history in his hands, gone. Gonna rise again. There's corn in the crib and apples in the bin. Gone, gonna rise again. Having the smokehouse cotton in the gin. Gone, gonna rise again. Cows in the barn and hogs in the lot. You know, he never had a lot. But he worked like the devil for the little he got gone, 
gonna rise again These apple trees on the mountainside gone, gonna rise again He planted the seeds just before he died, gone, gonna rise again Guess he knew that he'd never see the red fruit hanging from the tree. But he planted the seeds for his children and me. Gonna, gonna rise again. High on the ridge above the farm. Gone, gonna rise again. I think of my people that have gone on, gone, gonna rise again. Like a tree that grows in the mountain ground, the storms of life have cut them down. But the new wood springs from the roots underground, gone, gonna rise again, gone, gonna rise again. Beautiful song. Mm -hmm. Cy Khan, so nice to have you back on the show. Thanks for coming. Oh, Michael, I, I've, you know, I, I've never turned out an invitation to Wood Songs, and there have been a lot of invitations. <laughs> Listen, I, I got to tell you, one of the most beautiful versions of that song was the one that you and Odetta did. Well, thank you very much. Now, th th <laughs> um, you, uh, background of a community organizer, Using music for communities. I guess I guess your background helps you figure out how you can best do that You know it, it helps a lot, but I think that any any musician Can play a role in strengthening communities because you know we're translators if you tell me a story It's just like I'm a musical journalist. I can take notes and then I can create out of the story that you've told me a truth set to music and I think that's what Tom does, I think is what Ken does, is what I do, what you do. We take people's lives and hopes and dreams and fears, we take the stories of everyday people and we give them back to them, and we give them back to the world. Mm -hmm. You, uh, well said. We don't want to talk about the details at this moment. Uh, we'll get to it as the show goes on. But you're, you're involved with a, a group of fine people concerned about their homes in the communities in, uh, in Bristol Bay, Alaska. And we have a little map that uh, we're going to show our, our audience where Bristol Bay is. It's a, it's a beautiful, pristine uh, fishing community that is just uh, almost pollution-free. It's uh, some of the, the, the biggest salmon uh, fisheries in the world. Most of the world's salmon comes from the Bristol Bay area. And so you, you were invited to come up there and, uh, and take a look around a couple years ago. Yeah, I was a, a, a fellow named Dan Strickland who had fished commercially in, in uh, Bristol Bay and in Cordova before the Exxon Valdez spill. But 30 years on the boats. He's retired now. He's three of his four sons, one of his daughters-in-law are running the boats in Bristol Bay. And he said, come help us tell the story, but not just the story of the dangers that we face, tell the stories of the communities, of the cultures, of the different languages. This is an area that is 25% Alaskan natives. There are many different languages spoken. And what I've tried to do in this CD, Bristol Bay, is to really to create a portrait of a way of life, of a set of communities, of ways of work, and to really listen, which is what I did, in two weeks in Alaska, I went into junior high schools, I went into fishing villages, and what I said to people is, tell me your stories, and I will do my best to make them into songs. And specifically, what uh, the communities there are, uh, are interested in is, is they have this beautiful Bristol Bay area, 
they obviously need jobs, and there's a gold and copper mine that wants to come in. So you have this, this beautiful, pristine bay. Then you have this job-producing mm -hmm. enterprise, which is a, a gold and copper mine, which is sort of like a strip mine or a mountaintop removal operation. They're just concerned about what's going to happen to the bay if this goes on. So we're going to talk about that as the show goes on, but you are part of a project called the Bristol Bay Project that has a brand-new album out, and Tom Chapin is part of that. Uh, they're going to do a song from the Bristol Bay album. This is a tune called Abundance. It's Tom Chapin and Cy Con together on the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio. <laughs> when you hear the word subsistence, do you think of someone poor with an outstretched hand? To us, it means abundance. Living off the richness of the land We've been here 10,000 years Along this river shore If there's any justice left We'll be here 10,000 more First salmon of the season we always take and give to someone else Any game we carry home We feed others before ourselves We've been here 10,000 years Along this river shore If there's any justice left We'll be here 10,000 more No power known can ever force me From this ancient place that gave me birth From the richness of this river And the abundance of this earth We've been here 10,000 years Along this river shore If there's any justice left We'll be here ten thousand more We'll be here ten thousand more From the Bristol Bay CD Beautiful album designed to help bring attention to the plight and the dangers around the Bristol Bay area of Alaska. Tom Chapin and Cy Khan, and we thought in order to get the actual flavor of what Alaska is like, uh, we invited Sarah Palin. She couldn't be here. <laughs> so we invited a wonderful Alaskan fiddler who's going to dip into one of his CDs. This is a tune called Tater Patch for the Taste of Alaska. Please welcome Ken Waldman to the Woods Songs. Old time <laughs> Also, an Alaskan fiddling poet. So let me, uh, there's a poem that I want to share with us. It's on that CD, but that after hearing Cy and hearing Tom and meeting them, I want to share this poem with that. This poem will be my short bio. It's called Missionary. One in a billion, I would say, of the force that sailed me from Philadelphia to Chapel Hill to Seattle. 
then Fairbanks, Juneau, Sitka, Nome, that last spot of northwest, northwest Alaska tundra coast, the jump off to Savunga, Shishmaref, Unalakleet, Koyuk, Stebbins, and the rest. Places I learned as I'd once learned home. The question, why had I traveled such distance toting books, a fiddle, and other white man's tools? To prove the vast sweep of wind? To live Conrad's supreme fictional wilderness darkness? To report we are all kin, a team of survivors hunting, dreaming, gathering the edge. Ken Waldman from Alaska. We're here with Tom Chapin and Cy Khan, and we are celebrating the idea of you using your music to help your hometowns. And Tom and Cy have a project that they're involved in. They're going to use that as an example. We're going to talk more about Bristol Bay Project and their songs, and we'll be back right after this. You're listening to Woodsong Show number 707, broadcasting around the world from the historic city of Lexington. If you would like to attend a Woodsong's broadcast when visiting Lexington, Kentucky, you can find reservation and show schedules on our website, woodsongs.com. We'll be back after the break with Tom Chapin and Cy Khan on the Woodsong's Old Time Radio Hour. half of our show is presented in part by the Folk Book social media site for music and arts and our worldwide family of Woodsongs partners. You can talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Folk Book. To browse our online archive of past shows or sign up for our email weekly newsletter, you can visit us online at woodsongs.com. Hi, this is John McCutcheon. You're exploring the world of grassroots music with folk singer Michael Jonathan on the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour. Thank you, John McCutcheon. And thank you guys for being here at the Historic Lyric Theater. We were taping our show in our hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. We're broadcasting all over the world on 509 radio stations worldwide. We're on public television coast to coast. Over 91 million homes receive our show on uh, television. So if you're enjoying what you're hearing on the radio, we encourage you to visit your, your hometown public television program guide because probably we're on the air in your hometown on television as well as radio. Certainly we're online at woodsongs.com. You can watch us every week on folkbook.com. Don't forget the dash. And uh, we are also wanting to remember uh, the fact that we are on the air worldwide in 173 nations on American Forces Radio Network, plus every military base, every U.S. naval ship at sea around the globe. And we want to say hi to all those fine people, good men and women. Because of that, we get a lot of email, and we love reading your email. If you want to send me an, a, a note, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, my email address is very simple. It's michael at woodsongs.com, and reaching into the Woodsongs mailbag. Here's one that just came in as I was getting ready to come out to the uh, broadcast taping tonight. Hey, Michael, you know, not long ago, I was driving with our family in Oklahoma City, and I heard this great show on the radio all about the banjo. I was listening to KCSC Radio 91.1 FM. It turns out that it was Wood Songs. I hunted down the website, and I discovered this wonderful world of music on the archive page. I'm so grateful for what the volunteers there do. I just love the grassroots organization, the real music that's presented on Wood Songs every week. We appreciate the volunteers and the artists that have forever changed my musical life. I am now a folk music fan, and I'm sure as soon as I can afford it, our family will come to Lexington to visit and become Wood Songs partners. Bobby Kessler. So isn't that nice to have people travel around the country? Tune in the show. 
We have a lot to talk about, but we also have wonderful music uh, on this broadcast coming from a very special community-driven uh, CD called Bristol Bay about what's happening to the, uh, the uh, pristine environment in Alaska. This is a tune off of that album that you'll find on that record called Once When I Was Young as performed here by the great Tom Chapin. Please welcome him back. Was in the town of Dillingham, I was first out on my own. Crewing on a drift but net boat, no money, car or phone. I took a leap out in the deep head first on the run. Thick as a brick, I could take a lick. Once when I was young. I met you in the harbor bar, do you remember when? Every night was a red light, every vagabond a friend I must have sounded pretty lame as I tripped over my tongue But maybe you were awkward too, once when I was young In the half light of the moonlight, your beauty shone like day You took me to your room, I could not turn my eyes away I, You put your lips against my lips, tongue against my tongue I thought my heart would blow apart Once when I was young Sometimes I dream in silver Sometimes I dream in gold Sometimes I dream of you, my love To keep me from the cold Then you got me crazy frantic When you finally turned away I couldn't sleep at all at night, I stumbled through the day I was lost, tossed, double-crossed, stranded, I was stung I almost died of wounded pride, once when I was young Sometimes I dream in amber, sometimes I dream in jade Sometimes I dream of you, my love and love Promises we made But promises are broken And yours was first to go You married in the winter time My heart froze hard as snow Your husband never challenged me About what he must have heard I worked beside him Twenty years He never said a word I see you in the bar tonight, we nod just like old friends I look down at your wedding band to break my heart again You lift your eyes and stare at me, I see the ring is gone I follow you into the night Like once when we were young Sometimes my dreams are black and white Sometimes they're ruby red Tonight I dream of you, my love, beside me in this bed. Three-time Grammy Award-winning Tom Chapin on our broadcast, Once When I Was Young, a song from the Bristol Bay CD. And Tom, uh, why did you decide to get involved in the uh, community of, of Alaska? You're not, you don't live there. I, uh, I think we're all Alaskans, but I'm not. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. Cy uh, called me up, started telling me about what was going on. And uh, there is less and less wild, beautiful productive places. You know, we talk about jobs in terms of the mine they want to put in there, but there's all these jobs that are happening right now in this fishery. It's one of the last great wild fisheries. And uh, the more he talked about it, the more I said, wow, we got to do something to try to try to hold on to this place. This world so is getting smaller and smaller, and, and, and uh, 
one more mine it is not worth this incredible place, which will never come back if, if they put it there. Well, the, 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 the pros and cons, you know, some few people feel like, well, this is going to be good for the economy. We need jobs. We need, we need people that are working, paying taxes and stuff. Uh, the, those that are concerned about the mine are concerned about the fact that it's going to be this huge, massive hole in the ground. And when they mine for gold and for copper, the byproduct of that search is uh, sulfur dioxide and, and an acid that uh, it has to be stored in these big pools alongside the mine. Matter of fact, one of those pools is going to have a, a dam taller than the Hoover Dam to hold back some all kind of, of this. A billion gallons, some ridiculous amount of, of, of liquid. There. Yeah, so, so how, how, do, how do songs and an album help protect against billions of gallons of poison being, being held back by some concrete that happens to be very near a seismic fault? Well, it's not the songs themselves. It's what happens to the songs when they reach out and touch you. I, uh, I was reminded of, uh, I found this, I, do, I have these two careers, one for families and one for grown-ups. And I remember reading uh, the great uh, Yip Harburg, who wrote the, the, all the words for the, for the Wizard of Oz, the original Wizard of Oz. And he said, music conveys emotion, words convey ideas. And a great song is an idea with emotion. And if you have a great song, it goes out and touches people. It's very dangerous for some people. You know, I mean, every time uh, dictators come, they, they, they always say, get rid of those musicians. <laughs> get rid of those artists. They're dangerous. Because the music doesn't do it itself. It, it's how it touches people and it teaches them and engages them. Yeah. Well said. So the issue is this beautiful, beautiful place called Bristol Bay in Alaska, and this group of uh, musicians have got together. They call themselves Musicians United to protect Bristol Bay, and so they're organizing themselves as songwriters and musicians to help their community. They're releasing an album, and Cy Khan is here, and he, from the Bristol Bay mm -hmm. CD, he's going to perform a song called Upstream. Please welcome him back, Cy Khan. <laughs> Every night we see the moon ascending from the earth Each new day we rise up to watch the sun's rebirth Every month the new moon wanes to give the old moon way Every year the salmon return to Bristol Bay Past the shoals and the rapids where the current Run strong past a hundred different dangers that make the odds so long. No matter how impossible their ancient journey seems, the salmon swim upstream. If you were a newborn salmon, if you had your say, would you think it worth the effort to even swim away? Knowing the statistics everybody learns Of all the millions that are born Only one or two return Past the shoals and the rapids Where the current runs strong Past a hundred different dangers That make the odds so long No matter how impossible Their ancient journey seems the salmon swim upstream We are like the salmon Yet not like them at all They number in the millions Our numbers are small At the end of their journey Not one is left alive We too are endangered Yet we will survive Past the mining corporations whose millions make them strong. Past the paid up politicians who string us along. No matter how impossible a way to victory seems, we fight our way upstream. Past the shoals and the rapids where the current runs strong. 
past a hundred different dangers that make the odds so long. No matter how impossible their ancient journey seems, the salmon swim upstream. The salmon swim upstream. Psycon on guitar, Tom Chapin on auto harp from the CD celebrating the uh, earth and the communities of Alaska. Bristol Bay is the name of the mm -hmm. CD. And, and Cy, how, you have, you have an issue there in, in Alaska with mm -hmm. the, the world's largest open pit copper and gold mine creating all these poisons that can drift down into Bristol Bay mm -hmm. and decimate the economy and jobs of the area if that happens. So that's what everybody's concerned with, right? How, how is a CD, how's the Bristol Bay CD going to help that? Well, first, Michael, the mine has not yet been built. The Pebble Mine, right. The Pebble Mine. It's being proposed. And there are a dozen different ways it can be stopped. Now, the front line are the people of Alaska, the people who fish for commercial, the people who fish for sport, the environmentalists, the Alaska natives. There's a powerful movement in Alaska itself. What we need now is a powerful international movement. And so, you know, the CD is really a very small part of the answer. And, you know, in some ways it's kind of like wood songs. It's about grassroots and community musicians but it's not just what Tom said so eloquently about the emotion conveyed by the songs. It's about the number of people that we reach. And so the idea behind this effort is not so much a CD, but what happens if a thousand musicians, grassroots and community musicians, those of us who play to 20, 30 people a night, but do it 200 times a year, what if we all join our voices together? both through the people we meet in, in, in house concerts and in halls like this, on shows like what's those, all of the people we reach through community and public and listener-supported radio, all of the people we reach through the print media and through people gathering together and singing our songs. I don't reach that many people myself every year, but multiply that by a thousand and then bring together people like, like Holly Near, like Pete Seeger, like Tom Chapin, like Ken Walden, like John McCutcheon, all of whom are members of this extraordinary effort. We can reach millions of people. We've got folks writing songs. Just in the last three months, almost two dozen new songs have been written, and they're not all in English. So the whole question is, can we harness not the individual art and skill and heart and passion of any one musician, but can we get a thousand musicians from the very grassroots up to join our voices together. So if anybody wants uh, information about the uh, Musicians United project that you're talking about, or the Bristol Bay CD, they can visit our website, woodsongs.com. If you click on the archive page, this is show number 707, and we'll give you that information. I'm gonna get real mercenary for a moment. You're talking about protecting the earth, which we all need. Everybody loves the earth and the environment, but life on this earth takes a job. And there's going to be some folks that are going to go, well, we need to come out with a CD protecting our jobs. This, this thing's going to cause us to, to work for, for years and years and years. I've got two children. I've got, I've got a home. I've got a mortgage. Alaska's expensive. I want to work. The issue, Michael, is not that people need jobs. It's that people have jobs that can be destroyed when the sulfuric acid goes downstream. Michael, we all live downstream. And there is, I mean, Tom talks about locally grown, but the issues in our world today, there is no locally grown environmental issue. They all affect us all. What we are protecting are thousands of jobs in Bristol Bay, the rest of Alaska. Fishing is the largest part of the Alaskan economy. And it's not just the 2,000 families that have permits to fish in Bristol Bay the 6,000 people who fish there on those boats alone every summer, the people who work the catteries, the people who work the boats that ship. The salmon in Bristol Bay create 10,000 jobs. The mine would create 600 
and stands to destroy 10,000. That's not a trade-off that any of us who live downstream can accept. And that's the passion behind the Musicians United project. Psycon. We want to uh, get our taste of uh, living in Alaska by someone who actually lives in Alaska, and he's going to do a tune that's uh, named after a little town in that great state. It's called A Week in Eek. Please welcome Ken Waldman back to the stage. Thanks, Michael. Before I launch into the tune, I can mention about 16 years ago, I was at the Anchorage Folk Festival, Sunday night, and since I talk on stage, I mentioned what I would be doing the next day, which was going from Anchorage to Bethel, Bethel to Eek. There was the Eek Authors Festival, and I would be there for about a week. And I was on stage, and I said, I think I'm going to have to write a poem called A Week in Eek. <laughs> and I did. I'll, I'll do the poem first this time, then do the fiddle tune. A Week in Eek. Kids in sneakers squeaking across the Eek school gym floor, streaking towards baskets. Or else sneaking out of class to steal a smoke or a peek at an uncle's or cousin's sleek new Arctic cat. Meek kids, cheeky kids, rural chic kids, geeks. Kids that speak weak and Yupik in village English that leaks articles, the and uh in particular, making language go creak so nice. Eek winter days, not quick, not slow, just a dark, freaky trick like the snaky bow of a rogue bachelor gussuck playing fiddle those decades back. Unique eek where weeks pass in a day and an hour last weeks. Times as wild as any. Dr. Seuss might seek. So that's the week and you can I made up a fiddle tune. I'll play it through once. is actually a little town that really does exist. So we're talking to uh, Psycon. Let's welcome uh, uh, Tom Chapin back to the stage as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bristol Bay has a potential issue with the possibility of the creation of this massive, huge mine that could very well, if there's an earthquake or storms or something, wash all this poison down into the bay and destroy generations worth of salmon fisheries and families and the economy there. There's other communities that have other things going on too. How, how does the Bristol Bay Project and Musicians United set an example perhaps that others can follow? Perhaps in South Texas there's issues there with people coming across the border that they're concerned with or in Appalachia there's mountaintop removal. In, in, in New York, New Jersey perhaps it's something as simple as litter along the highway. How, how can they use what you're doing as an example in their hometowns? Of course, as, uh, in upstate New York we're, we're facing the question of fracking which is another major issue in terms of the, uh, wrecking the, the underground. Uh, it really comes down always to local, uh, you know, the, the local folks just, just really working hard in their own territory, uh, you know. It, and I think that, uh, that Cy, because he went up there and spent two weeks, suddenly became a local. <laughs> no, I'm never a local. I'm always from the outside. But, but Michael, here's what I think. I'll just tell a very quick story. I was doing a workshop about this model, right, of, of grassroots and community musicians banding together, no pun intended. And somebody actually told me, somebody from upstate New York said, gosh, I love what you're doing, but this isn't really my issue. Fracking is my issue, but I don't want to steal what you all are creating. And I said, please, please, please steal what we're doing. We'll help you. Create an upstate New York coalition of musicians, of community and grassroots musicians. We'll tell you everything we've learned. I hope that in Texas and in Thailand and in Ghana, that musicians will say, now this is interesting. It doesn't take away our income. It doesn't take a lot of time. All we need to do is one song in a concert. All we need to do 
is write a song. All we need to do is write a poem, but there will be 200 of us doing it. So I hope that everybody will steal this model and that it'll be locally grown. <laughs> well said. Yeah. Tommy, your, your brother Harry saw the plight of people starving to death around the world. And, and, and he started an organization where he was able to use his music and others' music to become very proactive to bring uh, a, attention to the, 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 the level of hunger around the globe, and the attention doesn't fix it, but it kickstarts it. The big thing Harry realized right away, I mean, he started out in trying to do a big benefit concert, sort of like the Bangladesh concert, this is 1974, 75, and never happened, but in the course of that, he realized which, what creates change is people today, tomorrow, next year, 20 years, just being on the issue. And uh, the now, you're, you're still involved. I in still Harry. am. I'm on the board. Uh, I was, uh, uh, Harry said, you're going to be on the board in 1975. And I'm still on the board. It's called <laughs> Why Hunger? If you're interested in it, it does amazing work across the country, across the world. Whyhunger.org. Check it out. It's an amazing thing. And it's, it's a thing my brother Harry started. But, but Harry died 31 years ago, almost 32 years ago. And so he started it, but who kept it going was us was you, with folks, other folks believed in this idea, saw the possibilities, and have kept it going. And that's truly what, what Sai is talking about. It's always, you know, uh, this TV show about, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the survivor. That, that's not the way the human race has survived. The last person standing. The last person standing is going to die. The, people, the, way that, <laughs> the way we survive is that we all figure out how to work together. And that's the way the human animal has survived and needs to survive. So the other thing that Sai, this, this interesting thing that Sai's talking about, the great thing about Why Hunger and my brother Harry as, and the great thing about Sai is inclusive. It's never like, watch me do this. I'm going to save this. It's, we could do this. We can do this. And that's, the, and that's the, that's a secret. The secret is, hey, help me. We can do this together. Well, we are uh, glad to be part of your effort to uh, bring attention to Bristol Bay, just like we would love to be part of anybody else's effort to help their hometowns and their communities. And uh, speaking of the we, we're going to gather all three of our artists together, Ken and Tom and Cy, are going to dip into the Bristol Bay CD, brand new album, celebrating the earth and community of Bristol Bay, Alaska. This is a tune called Last Trip Home. Tonight it opens with a poem called Abstract of a Salmon Fisherman. For ten seasons I've trolled dark tails flapping as I drag and raise the dying heaviness. Exposed to the wet winds chill, I often question the meaning of fishing. My back and shoulders ache even as I get paid. Arriving home, I hug you and kiss your forehead. You tell me salmon fishermen act as naturally as salmon. I take your hands and pretend we're swimming slowly upstream to our creek bed. You catch me by letting me be. Mama still remembered how the salmon ran so thick. You could drop a bucket overboard, almost take your pick. Canneries ran night and day, no one worked alone. What will we do if it's the last trip home? This could be the last trip home. In this boat, my family left me. This could be the last trip home. In this life we call our own. For their money chokes the water and their dreams pollute the river. What will we do if it's the last trip home? I stand here in the wheelhouse looking out at Bristol Bay. A million years to make it, it could vanish in a day. River, just a memory, salmon turned to stone. What will we do if it's the last trip home? This could be the last trip home in this boat 
my family left me This could be the last trip home in this life we call own For their money chokes the water and their greed pollutes the river What will we do if it's the last trip home? I think about my children, how will they survive? If all I have to leave them is a pit two miles wide, boats wounded and abandoned on the earth's despoiled bones. What will we do if it's the last trip home? This could be the last trip home. In this boat, my family left me. This could be the last trip home in this life we call our own. For their money chokes the water and their dreams pollute the river. What will we do if it's the last trip home? What will we do if it's the last trip home? Oh. Wasn't it great having Cy Khan here? Alaskan fiddler Ken Waldman, thank you for coming all the way out here. And Grammy Award winner Tom Chapin. One of the greatest communication sources known to man is music and art. It transcends language, it transcends generations, it transcends economic barriers. A good song transcends everything because it's universal. Why? Because it speaks deep, deep, deep inside the spirit. It's not just your head. And that's why so many great artists like like Harry Chapin did with, the, with World Hunger, or Pete Seeger and the environment along his hometown in, in the Clearwater. So many artists, from Joan Baez to Sting and others, use their music, the universal language, to help the causes they believe in. Look at what the opportunity is for you by their example. Cy and Tom are trying to help with an issue that's happening in Bristol Bay, Alaska. Look at your hometowns. Look at the opportunity that you can do. You can have a front lawn concert of a few of your friends on your property and sing a few songs and then go out and pick up the litter along that roadside. If you don't do it, who's going to do it? Look what else you can do. Get yourselves four or five songs, three chords in the truth. One of the greatest causes that we can get involved in is supporting and helping and encouraging our older folks who are alone in the nursing homes. Go give them a concert. Go to a local hometown school and sing to kids where music and art is being taken away. President Kennedy once said that if art is to nourish the roots of our culture, society must set the artist free to follow their vision. He was right. Sometimes your vision is very much your hometown. Gandhi said, we must be the change we see in the world. So get out there, get your instruments together, and go change something. My name is Michael Jonathan. I'm a folk singer. I'm a log cabin dweller, and we'll see you next week on The Woods Song. You've been listening to Wood Songs, broadcast number 707. Michael's opening song was Appalachian Road, found on his front porch CD, featuring Jeff Hirschberger on cello, Aggie Clixby and Sarah Payne on violin, Steve Franken on viola, and Bob Ryan on bass. Our chief engineer is Kevin Darth Fader Johnson. Technical assistants are Brian Clausing, Brandon Eves, Eric Anderson, and Jerome Cyberboy Galt. Our TV and internet broadcast is presented by Inside Communications and KET, directed by Josh Heese, and assisted by Aaron Beyer. Our technical director is S.J. Matthews. The Wit Songs crew member of the week is our lobby manager, Kathleen Volker. Special support provided by Hybrid Springwater, QX.net, Natasha's Bistro, and Gumbo Yaya in Lexington. Our show is produced with the support of VisitLex.com, the Bluegrass Hospitality Association, and the Marriott Griffin Gate Hotel, welcoming visitors from all over the world to Lexington, Kentucky. Wood Songs and the Wood Songs symbol are registered trademarks of Rachel Aubrey Music. Thanks for listening. I'm Joe Conkright.
For Michael Jonathan and the entire Woodsongs crew, this is Dorothy Edwards. We hope you'll join us again next week for the Woodsongs Old Time Radio Hour. Thank you.